The Park, filmed in isolation in Glasgow and Perthshire. A grassy urban park with enclosed children's play area surrounded by tenements. It is deserted. The park's no a big park. You can take it all in by just two looks. But it's ours, sitting just outside our wee flat, an oasis of greenery in a desert of concrete. It's a surprising victory for city planning. A wee patch of the countryside transplanted into the heart of the city. After school, every day, come rain or rain, my boys and me are there. Sliding in the slides, swinging in the swings, shooting down the chute. It's a busy wee place, littered with dog walkers, pensioners and personal trainers screaming at skinny lads dreaming of a six pack. <laughs> It's all of us, together, mingling amongst the stoic, slanting trees. It may just be a few patches of green in a play area, but now, for all of us, it's more important than ever. Because those days of shoots and personal trainers and all that, well, that was back then. Before... You know what came along. Ryan in his flat. Back when social distancing was trying to get out of Kevin from account Stagdo, when only those with a degree in bullshittery knew what furlough meant. Now, our park, it's not the same. Not for me, and especially not for my boys. His eyes glisten. I don't know when it was. Um, first day of lockdown, what was that? Uh, 10, 12, 84 weeks ago. <laughs> I've lost all sense of time. The wee man was all excited because he'd got out of school early and of course we walked to the park. We no longer went out to play. We were engaging in a state-sanctioned exercise. He salutes with a grin. The smile fades. I'll never forget it. The two-year-old runs up to his favourite swing and he grabs the gate to the play area and he pulls. But it doesn't budge. He pulls again. Nothing. He sees the padlock. He tries to shift it, but he can't. And he looks up at me. His eyes are holding so much confusion. It's locked, Daddy. Aye, wee man. It's locked. No swing today, Daddy? No, son. Um, not today. Then the five-year-old points over at the fitness equipment. Look, what's all that stuff? Police tape whips around in the wind. It's been uh, haphazardly thrown over the machines, but its intent is clear. Stay away. He thrusts his <clears throat> chin forward, then smiles. The wee man runs there anyway. Of course he does. Tries to duck underneath the tape. Stop! Come here, you! I grab him, but he kicks up at me. But I always play in there. That's my fire engine. Well, do you know what that sign says? Stay away. You go in there and the police will come for you. Really? But will they put me in jail? Ryan nods. Cool. Still can't believe that's what I said. The police will come for you. The police will come for you. He points into the camera then shakes his head. Now the two-year-old spotted a man walking a cute wee dog and of course he goes over to have a look. Oh no! We don't go near other people! His eyes well up. Two years old. Now that's ingrained in him. We don't go near other people. I mean... He pinches the bridge of his nose, composing himself. I'm trying to protect him. But it's all fueled by fear. And I know he feels that. 
I mean, can you unlearn that kind of thing? Social distancing. I don't know. But then he's off again, heading towards the padlock gates, <laughs> clanging the metal together, trying his damnness to break the chains, but not being able to process that the chute and the swings are out of bounds. He forces a smile. And do you know something? You know, every single time, right up until now, he still has a wee go to see if it will open. Man's locked it, Daddy. A boy stares into the locked play park, clinging to the railing. He turns and goes. Ryan's eyes well up. And every time it breaks my heart. The boy tramps across the grass towards home. On the locked gate to the play park is a warning notice. So, there we are, the three of us, standing in the park, not knowing where to go, what to do. Oh. Then the five-year-old pipes up. This isn't a holiday. You told me this would be like one big holiday. He's right, I did. Oh, and it's not. But kids will be kids. Twenty seconds later, they're both off together, finding new places in the park to discover. His eldest son balances on a fallen log. They're playing in all its corners, delving into the nooks and crannies. They're digging up worms, making daisy chains, blowing dandelions in their ma's face. The two of them rediscover the total pleasure of splashing about in muddy puddles. Dad, look, I'm Peppa Pig. And as the splashes fly up and I'm getting covered in Glasgow's muddy, toxic rainwater, oh, I can't help it. I'm beaming. See, watching the two of them together, the two of them needing one another more than ever, and being there, no questions asked, is just... All this time, there was a whole other park out there that we had forgotten. We play hide-and-seek, even though there's hardly anywhere to hide. Oh, you're behind the tree! Again. We draw pictures on chalk in the ground, or look at what other children have drawn and left behind. To be honest, I don't know what these other kids are taking, but that's some weird stuff going on in their heads. And though the wee man can't wait to get back to school and see his pals and... Well, let's face it, neither can I. He raises his eyebrows and grins. We both understand the need to be patient. And though it's hard sometimes, I try and appreciate the little things. The trees, flowers, birdsong. My boys. His eyes fill with tears. Oh, I need to keep this going. <laughs> I can't let it disappear. Part of me thinks I'm going to look back at this time with all its disappointments and... shiteness. <laughs> and I'll think that for me and the boys it was a shift, you know? I see who they are now, really. See them. And they don't think of me as just some distraction that comes in from work at tea time. It's been good. I mean, not all of it. <laughs> don't, oh, don't get me started on homeschooling. But... Dad, we going to the park? Ryan hears the voice of his son in the next room and smiles. But who knows where this ends? At least we know it will end one day. Won't it? Hi, I'm coming! Jesus. Those play park gates will get opened. The tape will get pulled down and the scary signs will get taken away. 
But until then, Dad! I'm coming. Camden. Until then. Text on screen. On Tuesday the 30th of July, the play park was finally opened. Dougal and Laurie McGregor were the first to go in, and the last to leave. Written by Andy McGregor. Performed by Martin McCormack. Dougal McGregor, Laurie McGregor, and Kirsty McGregor. Filmed by Martin McCormack and Andy McGregor. Editor, James Alcock. Casting, Laura Donnelly, CDG. Composer, Andy McGregor. First Assistant Director, Sophie Cooper. Production Coordinator, Ailey Crerer. Technical Advisors, Seth Hardwick and Richard Price. Scenes for Survival Production Team. Artistic Director and CEO, Jackie Wiley. Executive Producer and Deputy CEO, Brenna Hobson. Executive Producers, Caroline Newell and Charlotte Gross. Programme Associate, Cora Bissett. Script Editor, Rose Kelleher. Associate Producers, Susanna Armitage and Callum Smith. Programme Advisors, Stella Litchfield and Emma Shad. Production Coordinators, Ailey Crerer, Maureen Dalton and Dallas Murray. Executive Producers for Scenes for Survival, BBC Arts, Jaunty Claypool, BBC Scotland, Gavin Smith and Louise Thornton. Screen Scotland, Leslie Finlay. Hopscotch Films, John Archer. Produced by Brenna Hobson. Directed by Ben Harrison. Produced by National Theatre of Scotland in association with BBC Scotland, Screen Scotland and BBC Arts Culture in Quarantine with support from Hopscotch Films.